You are flowing today. I am what? Flowing. Yeah. Like you, the way you look, your hair, <laughs> you are just flowing. I'm not a Erasmus student. Yeah, but you're like you're speaking English, and we all speak English, and that's. Oh, you do. But I, but I would want to hang out with you though. Like I wouldn't come there just because I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to do the party, but I want to hang out and get to know you. I don't know. I don't. Everybody else don't matter. I want to hang out with you. You are flowing today. I am what? Flowing. Yeah. Like you, the way you look, your hair, <laughs> you are just flowing. And it's just so, it's so graceful that I was like, all right, where is she going right now? I need to stop her and see, and see who she is. Like, do I know you? No, you don't. Yeah, I, that's why I came up to you, because you don't know me. You're like one of those flowing, beautiful girls. I was just like, I'm going to get to know. But actually, if I give you my Facebook, because not today, uh, I have a meeting, like uh, with a group. Oh, it's an important meeting? Like, kind of, like Erasmus meeting. OK, before, what time did, is your group supposed to come here? I don't know. My friend is like, uh, is, she's always late, so I. I <laughs> she's yeah. always late. No, no, she really, she's always late, like one, two or three hours late, like, yeah. I just don't, I, I never, like, meet with her in time. I just, I have to be late because she's always late, so, yeah, kind of. One, two or three hours? Why do you even meet up with her? That's actually one, two or three hours, like, yeah. so let's say that, let's say you said, let's meet here at two o'clock. It's possible that she could come at 5 p.m.? Yeah. What, what do you tell her? Do you say, stop doing this, or you just like, No, oh. uh, no, no, she calls me that, okay, let's, let's meet in my, in my house because I'm not ready. Like, she, she's like this. <laughs> At like 4.30. You're like, you should have been here two hours ago. No, I always call her like, okay, where are you? She's like, uh, I'm, I'm at home, like, I, I, I have to be ready, but, but let's, just, let's just meet in my house. <laughs> no, she's, she's never, she's never, she, she, can't, she can't do this. I'm, so. This this is such a wonderful outfit. I was like, these shoes look like uh, Japanese. No, not Japanese. Chinese shoes. They do. You look like kung fu down there, and right here you look so beautiful and flowing. So it was a great mix, actually, when I saw you. So I actually just keep it on Facebook, and we meet like whenever. Or you because, can because come she to make party, like because we just do parties for Erasmus students. I'm not an Erasmus student. Yeah, but you're like you're speaking English, and we all speak English, and that's. Oh, you do. But I, but I would want to hang out with you though. Like I wouldn't come there just because I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to do the party, but I want to hang out and get to know you. I don't know. I don't. Everybody <laughs> else don't matter. I want to hang out with you. Uh, are you finishing up school? What's happening right now for you? No, I'm. I'm. Uh, I just started school. Like I mean, uh, like uh, university. Just one year. You just started university. Yeah. Oh. You smoke a cigarette like you like you're 30 though. <laughs> you know that you're walking down the street and I was like you're a, you're a seasoned professional in smoking cigarettes. No, <clears throat> I just started smoking like one year ago, so not that. Not what is wrong with you? You're beautiful. What is wrong with you? If you start smoking, you do know you do know what's gonna happen, right? Like later on, like you're, you're, you're gonna age really fast. Like if you throw this, if you throw it away like in a year. You'll be older and you'll still look like this. <laughs> Do you know that? Wait, I just asked the group or before. Do you know how to dance? Kinda. Why? No, I'm not gonna ask you to dance right now. No, I'm just I, know. I was just wondering, do you dance? Because I actually love dance. What about you? Do you love dance or do you yeah, just like? I'm, I'm kinda. I'm a kind of um, an art person. I do animation. Mm. I do animation. I I was singing like um, I started singing when I was 14. So kind of I was dancing too. I was singing. I was painting. 
and now I study animation. Yeah. You should, you're gonna do art forever, wait, huh? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, so, I just give you my favorite, okay? Okay, okay. Is this the girl you're waiting for right here? No, but she's one of them. Okay. Do you have WhatsApp? Uh, yeah, but I don't use it, so it's like easier to Facebook. <laughs> you look like you're lying. Do you, do you use WhatsApp or you don't? No, I, I don't. I you don't, don't use really that. use it. Okay. I just don't check it like every day, like maybe one week or something like that. As you guys have seen me talking to that girl, it was so wonderful. She was so flowing and, and white. And what I really enjoy about seeing a woman when she's like that is that that is the epitome of what makes a man go, ah. So anyways, what I really want to bring you into now is, do you actually just care enough to do it? Do you care enough to meet a woman and start the life that you want? Do you care enough to see a girl walking down the street and to want to go over to her? Or do you care so much that the people you have never gotten the approval of, getting it? And this is something very important for you to make the distinguishing, distinguishment between. Because it comes down to these two. Approving yourself of what you want or continuously seeking the approval of the people who've never given it to you. I want you to understand that we don't seek approval for the sake of seeking approval. We don't. We seek approval because we've never gotten it. That's it. There's an area of our life that we've never gotten approval on, and the moment that we feel approved in that area, we feel the permission to actually go do it. We feel more permission. If you are already doing it, you feel more permission. The reason why I say the approval of people you've never gotten it from is because you may not even notice, but you're still seeking the approval of someone else, someone in your life. I don't know if it's a parent. I don't know if it's an old girlfriend. I don't know if it's your brother. I don't know if it's your friends. You're still seeking the approval of somebody to give you the permission to really live. One of the ways that this starts to show up is, <clears throat> you will notice that when you see a woman, you wanna to speak to her. But the moment that you wanna to speak to her, something else comes up as well. And that something else is, will this be approved of by someone who matters to me. And you may even say the approval of the people around you, but the, the, the thing that really, really, <laughs> that I have to bring you into is that you want the approval of the people around you because they actually do in some way matter to you because they represent someone who actually didn't give you approval throughout your life. They represent that in some way. Maybe they represent external influence that you had in your life younger who didn't give you approval. Maybe they represent, or maybe these guys represent, the same type of thing that your friends never gave you. Maybe the older people represent the approval that you've never gotten from external influence that was older than you. The external influence that you've never gotten, you'll continuously seek that approval everywhere you go. Because the external influence means a lot to you. The external influence on what you should do for your life means a lot to you. And we've been taught this. We've been taught that the factors in our life that influence us, that 
give us a chance to be who we are, that give us a chance to actually live, start outside of us, which is parents, teachers, etc. So as you are going up to the girl, or you want to go up to the girl, you also want the approval of the external influence still. And it will continuously manifest. Because let's say nobody is around. Nobody at all. And it's just you and the girl. Let's say that you're walking through the park and you just see her. She sees you. And you go, you know what? I'll just, I'll just do it. The moment that you do it, it's still going to manifest because you are going to be seeking the woman's approval. Seeking approval has so much influence on us because seeking approval has taught us that when someone else is appro approves of me, I can then have the permission. That's why it has so much influence on you. Because if it didn't, seeking approval would just be some fucking other thing like the other things out there. But it means so much because you are waiting for the permission. You're like in this position where you're at a standstill really. You're at a standstill and you feel paralyzed. I want to go do it, but then this person may think this. I want to go do it, but this person may think this. And you're just waiting for them to give you the permission to go finally do it. Because guess what? Because you've been attached to external influence for, you, for your own way of living, you don't know how to lean on your own self for permission. You don't. So what you'll do, every single time you see the girl, you'll feel paralyzed because you don't have the permission yet. It's like they, you're being obedient. This is what it is. You see the girl, you want to talk to her, and then your body reacts because you're waiting for the permission. And right now you're being obedient because it's like, okay, you probably shouldn't do something where you're going to be viewed as creepy or you probably shouldn't do something where people are not going to like you for. And that's what the external influence told you and you really believe that so it, it, you will just be stuck. And that's that paralyzing you feeling you feel when you want to go meet a woman. It's not just this thing where women are scary to let you know. It's not just this thing where we see a girl and we feel, you know what, this situation is so scary and the girl, and I don't want people around me to, you know, think this is weird. That's so scary. No, I don't want to do it. It's not really like that. Because in actuality, you don't care what people think. In actuality, you don't. Of course, because your mind has all this conditioning, you do care. But in reality, you don't. Because in reality, all your attention is here. When you actually become present to what's happening here, all your attention moves to the center of you. So you don't, have a you don't have a chance to go, what about this external influence? What about this external influence? You don't have a chance to do that. Or you don't even have the chance to be obedient to the external influence that told you you should be like this or be like this. You don't have a chance. You only have yourself and what you want in the moment. But that's not how most of guys are. That's probably not even the way that you are. You probably still feel that my mind is impacting me so much. External influence is impacting me so much. How do I just get over this? How do I get over it? And this is one of the questions that I had as well. One of the questions I had is, why do I just care so much? There's people here, and I know for sure from other videos and stuff, that these people right here, eventually they won't care what I'm doing. But why do I care so much when I go do it and they notice me do it? Why do I care so much? And then I started to dissect and move back and be quiet within myself so I can actually see. And I came to external influence has been so strong on me that not even just me, you, that we've been conditioned to be perfect. We have been conditioned to be so perfect that we're not willing to risk situations that will make us look not perfect, that will make us look imperfect.
Because if I do this situation wrong, then that means that I'm not being perfect. Remember, as you're coming up through life, it's always, you're always being told, do the right thing. Every time you're bad, you're punished for it. It's not, it's not the space of you're doing something bad, I understand this, we do bad things in life. No, it's you're punished for it. Don't do bad things. Don't do it wrong. If you do it wrong, you're going to fail school. If you do it wrong, you're going to fail this. If you do it wrong, you're going to fail this relationship. Always having the side of everything that's done right is praised. Everything that's not done right is not praised. Then it makes you feel like, you know what? I got to do everything right. Okay, I don't know how to go into the situation. She's walking like this. Maybe she's in a rush. I shouldn't do this. I'll fuck it up. She'll think that I'm creepy. She'll think that I'm sleazy. No, I, 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 no, I, I, sh I was told that if you, you know, do something that nobody likes, that, you know, you won't be liked and, and you should be somebody who's likable to people, somebody who's nice to others. You have all these things that happen and you're conditioned to be obedient. What are you being obedient to? You're actually being obedient to doing it right. That's what you're being obedient to. Because even your parents, even those who had strong influence on you growing up, they were even obedient to doing it right. Obedient to doing things right in life. To never going against the grain, never going against the flow of like what life, what people condition you to believe that life is flowing as. Nobody, really nobody has ever went against the flow. Now people are going against the flow. So the next generation can grow up more free. But if you're watching this video, it's more than likely you had a parent who was going with the flow of doing it right. They were obedient to it. Because their parents told them, be right doing this, do this right, good, good grades. And, they, and they ever, every single time they did something wrong, there was something wrong with you. And you need to fix it. You need to study harder. You need to do this. You need to work towards perfection, but at the same time, they're letting you know you don't have to be perfect. But, it, but they are pressing onto you to be that. You should do the right thing. They say to you so much, you should do the right thing, but they never tell you that not doing the right thing is also okay. That you learn from not doing the right thing. The only way that they really make you learn from not doing the right thing is punishing you. So do you actually know what that means? That means that you are in the prison of having to do everything right. That's the prison that you're in for your whole life. Up until now, probably. You're in the prison of doing everything right, being obedient to what's where, whatever is right. And anytime you do anything that's wrong or a mistake or anything, you're punished because now you need to come back into the box of this is the way that things are, this is right. It's really not the way that life works, as you can see. Life works in a way where you must be willing to, first of all, do things in the way that's not, quote unquote, the right way. You must be willing to make mistakes. Things that I'm telling you right now that you know but probably never heard from the context of, you are right now attached to the obedience of being right. And I'm telling you, I want you now to move into the zone of being wrong. I want you to move into the zone of doing things not right. I want you to screw up. That's what I want you to do. I want you to fall on your face when it comes to things in life because this is the way that we really need to grow. Through all that seeing that I've been doing and dissecting, I, I just went, external influence is not even real. It's real in my mind, but it's actually not even real. It's not. Yes, you can feel the energies of people, for sure you can. But the real external influence is only made up. 
Nobody can actually really stop you from doing what you want to do. Unless you're in a country, of course, like North Korea, where you are forced to do something or you'll be killed on a country like that. But you're still even in that situation, not even forced. Being intelligent and using your awareness, it could be ways that you could be free even within a prison imprisonment. But coming back to this, external influence <clears throat> has only been given energy from you. You're actually doing this, the external influence. That's what you're doing to it. You feel in the moment, you know what? I care what this person think of me. And the reason why you care what that person think of you is because you unconsciously allowed your energy to move there. It's moved there. Now that it's moved there, of course they can influence you. Of course they can really impact your actions. Of course they can. Because you're being obedient to them. Of course they can. You put your energy out like that because you're continuously giving the energy out. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to be the person who does the right thing. You want to look right in their eyes. You want to look like you're doing the right thing. Even if you're doing something that people can constitute as wrong, you still want to look right. You still want to look like you're obedient, that you're not somebody who's imperfect. You still want to look like that. Of course you will allow them to influence you. If you're in front of the woman, all the things you hear about women and what they want, the niceness that they want, the man who's not going to say things that are mean, the guy who can love them, which is true, but you, you are so in that moment giving your energy to the person, to the woman, that of course she's going to influence your actions. Of course if she's just like standing there in front of you doing like this, looking at you, of course you're going to feel like, okay, maybe I should keep it going, maybe I should you know, do something different. Of course you are. Because in that moment you feel like, okay, she's, she, she wants something from me. Okay, I, I better be obedient and, and, and tell her something. Or I better be obedient and fill in the space. And it's crazy that you don't even want her actual approval, but you are living out the approval and it's manifesting here. As you live it out in your mind, it continuously manifests in every single situation. I don't care who you're in front of. A woman, your friend, your brother, your mom, it will continuously manifest because you love external influence to tell you what to do. It needs to give you permission so you can live. You will constantly manifest it everywhere. And now that brings me into approving yourself. Approving of what you want. Switching the energy from external influence to internal influence. Internally influencing yourself. This is something that's going to be very different. Of course, there's many ways it's been said, but internal influence. Allowing yourself to influence yourself. Which means be your own beacon of life. That means take full responsibility, not like you take full responsibility for your actions, no. Take full responsibility, that means bring all your energies back here and then influence yourself. And what do you influence yourself through? What do you want? Because remember, what you want can move you in a direction. Influencing yourself through, I want to express myself. That's moving in a direction. I want to have women in my life. That's moving in a direction. I want to have beautiful women in my life because I've never experienced that and I want to learn through that process. That's now moving somewhere. You're internally influencing yourself. Because remember I said take full responsibility. You're not putting the responsibility on people anymore. So you're saying, sorry external influence, I'm going to now internally influence myself. And from that position, you can now understand this. Because if you're someone who's really going to move there, because I don't know if you will realistically, but if you're someone who's going to move to that position of internal influence, there's something I need to reveal to you. 
when you say I approve of myself, my internal influence, you also say I approve of the harsh judgments that people will give me for being internally influenced. Because remember, everybody else is externally influenced. They are. The greatest fear that people struggle with is what people think. So everybody is walking around externally influenced. How many times have you ran up to a woman, or before you've even ran up to a woman, you've just looked around and you've seen people just walking around, they're in their head, or they're doing this, and they're, they're doing this, or you see maybe a group of guys sitting there and you know, they're checking out a girl or something, but none of them are gonna do anything because none of them wanna, wanna look stupid in front of each other. You can see it everywhere, you can. Everybody is externally influenced. But the moment you say, I'm gonna be internally influenced, and you start living, you must also understand in that moment, you're gonna be the person who's gonna break out of the mode of all the people who are acting in this externally influenced way you're gonna be the one that breaks out of the mode. When you break out of the mode, you need to understand that harsh judgment comes with it. I don't mean judgment, I mean harsh judgment. People talk about judgment in the sense of, you know, you, know, you could just stop caring what people think. You know, go out there, just live your life, and you know, to stop caring what people think, you need to go do what you fear. If you fear talking to a girl, do it over and over until you stop caring what people think. This is the way they try to make a frame, but they never tell you about harsh judgment. I mean the judgment on, you've ran up to so many different girls, and this time you went, you know what, I'm gonna be open and I'm just gonna show her myself. I'm gonna show her a part of myself that I'm not used to showing. And the girl goes, oh, that's kind of weird. That judgment, that's the harsh judgment because you're not, just going from the surface level place of just like, you know what, I'm gonna go approach women and I'm gonna stop caring what people think. You're not going from there. You're going from the position of, I wanna show her myself. I wanna show her myself. And she goes, that's weird. Now, from the position of that's weird, I'm not talking about the guys who goes, oh no, it's not weird, it's actually uh, very cool. I mean, if you think it's weird, that's you. No, I'm not talking about defending yourself. I'm talking about when you go, I want to be open and I'm not willing to defend myself because I actually don't have anything to defend, because you don't. That's the next level. You're going to feel harsh from that. And I say this because I was talking to a guy who I do Skype coaching with and he was saying that he was used, he, because we start talking about being transparent when you walk up to women. And he walked up to women, he said, I was being transparent, but I decided to just show her something from myself. And then she was just like, oh, no, 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 I'm not gonna go on a date with you because you do that. And she said that to him. And he said, in that moment, I actually felt hurt. And then I know exactly what he meant because the moment that you open yourself more and more and more and more, you actually are saying, I am wanting more and more judgment. I am wanting more and more harsh judgment. Because, oh, that's creepy? That's not really harsh judgment. Depending on, how, of course, how much you identify with it. But a guy can get to a point where he doesn't care what people think. He can run up to a lot of women. He can get to that point. But can he be, can, is he willing to say to a woman right now, I actually just don't know. I feel a bit nervous about this. Is he willing to say that? Like really say it without trying to defend it. Is he willing to say when he's on a date with a woman something that he probably wouldn't normally say or the girl will feel that's very, very weird without trying to defend it? I'm talking about harsh judgment. The feeling that you feel like I thought I was over this and I'm still dealing with this. That's what I'm talking about. You must be willing to feel harsh judgment. If you want to be internally influenced, harsh judgment is now the accepting thing. Yes, the surface level judgment is something to move through. But I'll tell you harsh judgment because there was another story. I was with a student in Melbourne. As I'm with this student, he approached this woman and 
I'm standing there, I'm listening to him, and she goes, no, 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 no. And then the mom comes out. As the mom is there, she just feels like this is very weird. And then we walk off. Then the mom sees him approach, because they were behind us, we are walking down the street, and I know they were still behind us. He approached another girl, and she didn't want anything to do with him. When the mom saw that, well, because she saw him actually there approaching, approaching her, and she was there standing with him, but eventually she walked off. Like nothing happened, there was no exchange of number or anything. The mom saw it, and she actually was just locked in on it. And she went, you know, I took a picture of you talking to that girl. I'm gonna send it to the police station. And then I just was like, ignore her, let's keep walking. And we kept walking and we were getting close to the light because they were actually walking right behind us, like right next to us. And we're getting close to a light and we had to stop. And she was behind us and she was just like, and I hope, and I hope they get you, you fucking pedophiles. She just started saying all kind of stuff like this. And I knew that the student would mentally break down right now because he had so many structures about what it meant to be a good person that I was just like telling him, as she was saying this, I was just like, just breathe it in. Just focus on your breathing. Because I knew that he needed to get away from his mind. But something I also knew in that moment is that that's the kind of judgment that comes with doing this. That's the kind of judgment that comes with being outside the mold. I've had to deal with judgment in many different types of ways. Women writing me messages to, about things that like this, that was weird, or me walking up to a woman and you know her freaking out or whatever. I've had to deal with it over and over and over, continuously. I'm sitting down talking to uh, some, girl, some girls yesterday with a student of mine. As I'm sitting down, um, of course me being aware of everything, I notice a guy sitting next to me, they're just looking over at us, at us and laughing. And I can tell that they're, they're, they have this way about them that's just like, you know, oh, I, I, I know that they're, they're gonna get uh, like, you know, blown out. And the girl, she didn't wanna talk after some time and then I stood up, we stood up and we started walking away. But as that was all happening, the student ran back. And as he ran back, I just took notice of this group. And as I'm looking at them, they're just seeing all this. And I could tell that they wanted to do it, but they would rather have a judgment about it. They would rather say something about what we're doing than actually do it. They would rather do that. They would. The thing that guys are really afraid of, like what if somebody laughs at me or something like this? Because remember, these are our most humiliating moments. When you're speaking to somebody and they're like, ha ha, or they're giving you a disapproving of any kind. I want to let you know that the moment you choose to approve of your own self, to approve of what you want, you become internally influenced, you also approve of harsh judgment. It comes with each other. When you say, I want to go speak to women and you start doing it, you also say, I want people to judge me harshly, which means them feeling like you are absolutely wrong for doing it. You're just wrong. I've had definitely had many girls in America say that to me, or not even to me, even to a student. Just like, do you know that some girls just don't want to be talked to? Like just going, saying this to the student. And I'm just like, no, I just went in, I grabbed a student and we just left. It comes with the territory. And I expressed it to you because I want to let you know, do you care enough to meet women that you really want to meet? Do you care enough to the point where you go, you know what, I want the harsh judgment. I want people to judge me because that is what needs to happen because it's what I'm going to learn from. For you to really be yourself, for you to really express yourself the way you want to in this world, you have to understand that the thing that's going to allow you to do that the most Expansively is judgment from others and judgment from what your thoughts tell you. This is the way. I thank you so much for being tuned in to this video. 
and everything I have to tell you. Feel free now to make the choice of being internally influenced or continuing on with your external want or need of external influence to give you the permission to be the way you want to be. I have a free Meet the Bedroom series. Everything from what do you do when you say hello to how do you take the woman upstairs. The only thing I leave out is texting, which is fine, because that's something you have to learn when you come to me. But just below in the description box, you can find that link. Otherwise, subscribe and share this with anybody who you feel is going to need this. And like I always say, who you are is valuable for that what you want in life and in relation to women. It's just realizing it. And if you made it this far in the video, um, I have to tell you that my London seminar tickets are coming out on Tuesday, so please be looking forward to that. Please do, because this is the one that's gonna sell out for sure, very quickly. So I want you to have a chance if you're someone who's been following me and you live in Great Britain, or the UK, I don't know what you call it. I'll talk to you in a few days.